In today's video, we're gonna answer the question, what is a class? And at a high level, a class is an object. It can have properties, uh, it can have functions attached to it. We're also gonna talk about how that ties into object-oriented programming. How does inheritance work? And we're gonna dive into some basic code examples here in a little bit. But before we do that, I gotta thank today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is an in-person coding and design bootcamp that offers housing at no extra cost for full-time immersive students. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a bootcamp grad. It was part of the process to help launch my iOS developer career, which I'm going on year five now in this wonderful profession. But aside from their iOS development program, Dev Mountain also offers programs in web development, software QA, and UX design. They even have a career services team to help you with job placement and financing options are available. And Dev Mountain loves hearing from my viewers. So if you or someone you know is ready to start this journey into iOS development, be sure to check out the link in the description. All right, back to the video. Here I am in an empty playground and we're gonna build a very basic developer class to really illustrate uh, how all of this works. So again, I just opened up a fresh playground. We're gonna delete that. And to declare a class, you use the class keyword. So C-L-A-S-S, -S, and then you name it with a, a capital letter too. It's like a, a proper noun. So we're gonna call this developer. That's the name of our class. Now we wanna give our class some properties. So our developer uh, is going to have a name name and you have to give it a type. So that is gonna be a type of a string. Uh, same thing, var job title, and that is also going to be a string. And then the last property our developer is going to have, again, we're gonna keep this simple. Classes could have you know many, many properties and each property could be like another class of something. That may be more, more advanced than what this video is supposed to be, but we're gonna keep our uh, example pretty simple. So the last one is going to be uh, years experience. And instead of a string, this is going to be an int. Like how many years of experience do you have? So maybe you noticed Xcode's yelling at me. It says class developer has no initializers. So our class has the properties, right? Name, job title, years experience. What Xcode is telling me is like, hey, you need to tell me how to initialize this class. And what initialize means is, is created, or it's like our developers being born. So when our developers being born, we have to tell Xcode like what these properties are. So for example, we have to say what our name is, what our job title is, how many years of experience. So to create your initializer, you type in init and start uh, giving it these properties. So name is a string, uh, just like we have up there. And then job title, is also a string. You notice this is the same as we uh, when we created our properties. And then years, uh, exp is a int. So, and then you create uh, the open braces, close braces. So now inside this initializer, we have to assign the properties that we're passing in, because that's what we're doing here. When we create our developer, we're typing in a name, we're typing in a job title, and we're typing in years experience to create our developer. So. That, these are the parameters that we're passing in. So now that we have these parameters passed in, we have to assign them to these existing properties up here. So to do that, we'll do self.name equals name. Now let me, let me pause here for a second because I remember this confused me a lot in the beginning. Uh, I was like name and name, you know, this is the same name for lack of a better word. Uh, so what is the difference here? Well, like I said, the name in white here, that's right here, that's the name we're passing in when we create our developer. We're gonna do that in a second, so this will make sense. But self.name is this name up here, right? Our developer has a name property, and we have to tell it what that name is. So this white name here is what that name is. Uh, so that's why we have self.name, which is you know the developer name. Uh, again, this will make sense in a little bit. So we'll do the same thing with the rest of the properties here. So self.jobtitle equals job title. Again, that's the job title we're passing in. Self.yearsexp equals years exp. Again, that's what we're passing in. So Xcode should stop yelling at me now. Uh, you see, we've uh, assigned all of our properties. So you see, we're still yelling at me. Let me let me comment out this last one. Xcode's still gonna yell at me because it's basically saying like, hey, you told me what the name was. You told me what the job title was. I still need to know what the year's exp is. So that's what this return from initializer without initializing all stored properties. Uh, there is a way where you don't have to assign values using optionals. I'm gonna show you that after this uh, initial example. So let's uncomment your ZXP, Xcode's happy now, we've assigned all the properties. So our developer has properties, it has an initializer letting us know how to set all those properties. Now let's actually use this, let, let's put this to work here. So here I'm going to say let Sean equal, and here's where I'm gonna initialize a developer. So I'm gonna do capital D, 
uh, start typing developer, you see I get the autocomplete and you see the C over here next to the autocomplete that tells me it's a class. Uh, do that now, open parentheses and you see I get my initializer in the autocomplete that's up on line eight. So hit that to get the autocomplete there. So here's where I pass in the actual values, right? This is our developer being born. We got to name it. We got to give it a job title and years experience. So the string I'm going to pass in is Sean. It's my name. Job title, iOS uh, developer, years experience, five. So now I have a developer object here that I put in a variable or a constant called Sean, and you can see the properties. So now you'll see if I, uh, let's do Sean.name. Uh, this is just gonna print it all out here off uh, on the right, Sean.jobtitle, Sean.yearsexp. Uh, now, if I run my playground over here on the right, you're gonna see all the values spit out. And there you go. So on line 17, Sean. Line 18, iOS developer, years experience, five. So again, I have my object that has the properties on it. Now I mentioned earlier, like we don't necessarily have to have all these values right at initialization, right? Sometimes you're building a program, you may not know one of the properties right when you initialize this. So like I said, uh, let's delete all this again. Um, if we make these properties optional, uh, we don't necessarily have to have this initializer. It'll just get initialized with nil. So let's go optional here. By the way, this question mark makes it an optional. I do have a video on optionals. If you're not sure what those are, I'll link to that in the description. But by making these optional, we allow this to be nil, or the value. So this also allows us to create an empty initializer. So just init, uh, and then that, and then we gotta do open braces, uh, close braces to, or curly braces, just to show that there's nothing going on, because this is us creating an empty developer. So let me illustrate this, because like I said, you may need the flexibility of not knowing what your properties are before you initialize the object. So let's uh, now create our empty developer. So let uh, Sean equal developer, and now we can just do the uh, open parens, close parens to get just an empty developer. So now when I print, uh, you know, Sean.name, Sean.jobtitle, Sean.yearsexp, what you're gonna see when I run it is all nils over here, right? So the optional allows it to be nil, no value, or have a value. But now what I can do here, as you see on, on line 21, I can do Sean.yearsexp, uh, I can assign values to it. So maybe, Maybe I want to initialize the object and then later on assign a value to it. So we'll run that again. And then now on line 21, I have the uh, the value of five. You see name is nil, job title nil, but year's exp is five because I assigned a value. So again, making these properties optional so they can be nil at the time of initialization allows you flexibility to assign those values later. All right, so let's kind of get rid of what we just did now that I've showed you that here. Uh, we'll get rid of these optionals. Uh, it'll just make the further examples easier uh, and I don't have to, it'll be less confusing. So uh, we have our properties. I've shown you how to do empty properties. Now let's talk about functions. Again, because a class can have a function attached to it. So let's do something like uh, func introduce yourself. And that is going to just do print. And we're gonna print hi. My name is, and then we're gonna do string interpolation. We're just gonna pass in name and I'm a, and then we'll do job title, period. So now I have this function that is going to say, hey, hi, my name is, and whatever name I have on there, it'll put on there, and then I am a job title. So let's, let's use this. Well, first I have to create the developer. I can't just call a function without creating the developer. So again, let Sean equal, and I know this is repetitive, but I strongly believe that repetition uh, is really key here to, to drive some points home here. So again, the name is going to be Sean and job title, iOS developer, whoops, I thought I was gonna get autocomplete, uh, developer, I don't know why, here's experience five, cool. So now that I have my object uh, of Sean that is a developer, now I have this function because all developers are gonna have this ability to introduce yourself. And now I can do Sean.introduce yourself. And if I run the playground here, it's going to print in the console. Yes, hi, my name is Sean and I am a, should be an iOS developer. You get what I'm saying. But you see the developer class has the ability to introduce yourself. And then once I create a developer named Sean, I can call introduce yourself on that class. So let's stop running this. Uh, let's delete that print statement there. And let's actually delete this initializer because what we're gonna talk about now is inheritance. Because this is a big reason why you would use a class. So inheritance, like we have our developer class, uh, we can create a subclass of that that inherits all of our behavior. Let me actually give you a, a real example that can understand it and you know as a big picture, and then we'll use our developer class to create a, a subclass. So 
uh, let's use UI button as an example for uh, inheritance. So right, uh, Apple and UI kit, they give us UI button. We don't have to build a button from scratch and all the functionality, Apple builds that for us. However, as you see on the screen, this is the default button that you get from Apple. You may have seen this before, you may be familiar with it. If you want to customize that, like, like say we want our buttons to look like this, right? A little more style to it. Well, this is where we would create a subclass of a UI button, because again, we want our subclass that has all of our unique styling, we still, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Like we still want to inherit all of the stuff UI button has. We just want to put our own little, our own little spin on it, our own customizations to it to make it look like this. So that's a benefit of making something a class is because a class has inheritance where you can subclass it, where you can get all of the behavior and properties from the parent class onto the child class, and then you can add your own spin on it. So that's inheritance at a very high level, big picture. Let's create an iOS developer that's a subclass of developer to really illustrate that point. So we're gonna leave our developer class here so you can see it. However, let's get rid of this bottom part here. However, below it, we're going to create a subclass and you declare that the same way, uh, class iOS uh, developer. Now here's where it's different. I have to say what it's a subclass of. It's a subclass of developer, right? So now you see, I'm declaring an iOS developer that is a subclass of developer. And by doing that, I get all of this stuff inherited, right? I'm inheriting everything a developer has. So uh, now we wanna put our own custom spin on what we want an iOS developer to be. And again, to keep the example simple, uh, we're just gonna say we want a var uh, favorite uh, framework, and it's just gonna be a string. We're gonna make this optional because uh, you know, we may not have a favorite framework and we'll, we'll show you how you can use that. So uh, what I wanna illustrate here is here I've created a very, very basic class that just has an extra property on it because it's unique to iOS developers, right? They have a sprite kit, you know, AR kit, whatever their favorite Apple framework. I guess I should put Apple framework, whatever. Uh, but now watch what I can do here. This is the power of inheritance, right? When I wanna create Sean again, and I want Sean to be an iOS developer, so create Sean, uh, equal now iOS developer. I don't have to create a new initializer because I've, I've inherited this initializer. So watch when I create my iOS developer, bam, I get all of the stuff from developer. I don't have to reinvent the wheel again. Remember a subclass is inheriting everything from the parent class, but just putting a little extra, putting some sprinkles on top of the cake. So again, uh, Sean, job title, iOS uh, dev, your experience five. So now I have Sean that's an iOS developer, uh, except now Sean, because it's an iOS developer, also has this property called favorite framework. Now let's actually use this favorite framework. Uh, we'll create a function here. So func uh, speak favorite framework. Now you'll notice, uh, oops, favorite framework's an optional. So we have to do some unwrapping here. So we're gonna do print and we'll do favorite framework and we'll use no coalescing. So that's just two question marks here. Again, if you're not familiar with how to unwrap optionals, I'll link to a video in the description. Uh, so we have to give it a default value if favorite framework is nil, right? If we never assign a favorite framework and we'll say, I do not have a favorite framework. So this is our default value if favorite framework is nil. So let's test that out. Uh, so we'll do sean.speak favorite framework and run it and we should get that default message. Yep, there it is. I do not have a favorite framework. Now, uh, in between there, let's let's assign Sean a favorite framework. So we'll do sean.favorite framework equals, and it's a string, so we'll say ARKit. That's my favorite framework. Uh, it's not really, I haven't had a chance to mess around with ARKit too much yet, but that's the example. So now what's happening is I created Sean as an iOS developer. Because it's the subclass that's an iOS developer, I have this property favorite framework, right? Just a normal developer doesn't have this property, right? We're only the, only the child, only the subclass. Same thing, our normal developer up here, right? This developer does not have this function speak favorite framework. However, one thing I forgot to mention is I also inherited as an iOS developer, this function introduce yourself. So Sean can also do Sean.introduce yourself because I'm inheriting that function. Run it again. There you go. Hi, my name is Sean and I'm an iOS dev. And you see, uh, I guess we're doing this example too, because I assigned AR kit to the favorite framework. Now, when I call Sean.speak favorite framework, it prints out AR kit. So that's an example of inheritance. Again, the big thing to remember with classes and inheritance is you have your, your parent object, the developer, or in the other example, the UI button that has all that functionality. 
And then when you wanna you know, have all that functionality and then a little bit of extra customization, like we do down here with our iOS developer, you can create a subclass of the parent class and add that extra stuff. And again, the big picture example, you have this basic UI button. And then if you wanna add your own custom stuff, you can create a custom subclass of a UI button. And I'll put one up on the screen here. This is a, a custom subclass of UI button. Don't worry if you don't understand all that code, but that shows you how you can have your customization code and custom initializers in that custom uh, UI button here, it's called GF button. Uh, that's just a, a real example in case you wanted to see something like that rather than some of these contrived examples and tutorials. So that is class and inheritance in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like my teaching style, you like this kind of stuff, I started releasing my own courses. You can check them out at the website on the screen. See you in the next video.